Michael Black Snow Comics here. Let's talk Jessica Jones season two. So I've been watching all the Marvel Netflix shows in chronological order. And the one right before this was Punisher season one. And it, it's kind of interesting because there's some direct comparisons you can make from the Punisher and Jessica Jones, um, especially in kind of the setup. Um, the Punisher, the main thing is that he witnessed his family killed and he was injured in such a way that he constantly relives his family being killed and that turns him into this very violent person out to seek revenge and um, he's on his killing spree going after everyone. Jessica Jones, you find out a little more um, in this season, they, they played up in the beginning that she also is constantly remembering her family's death, although she blames herself for her family's death. And where the Punisher kind of uses this to fuel him and fill him with kind of rage and anger, Jessica Jones more kind of self-pities because of it and then self-medicates by constantly drinking. And it kind of, instead of like filling her with rage, it's more filled her with self-loathing. Um, when, when you kind of directly compare the two, it's interesting just because, uh, well, I didn't love the Punisher, um, season one that I, I previously reviewed. I think that that's a much cooler way to like depict it and handle it as far as, uh, watching it, um, rather than seeing someone that just like feels bad for themselves and kind of acts jerky to other people to keep them at a distance so it's it's just kind of funny because it, it invites the direct comparison by having them back to back um season two jessica jones i like season one quite a bit i did not like season two nearly as much but it was kind of a curious thing i spent probably the first three quarters of season two not liking it and then it really pulled a lot of stuff together in the final few episodes that brought things up quite a bit for me. So I'd be a lot much more down on it if I didn't think things came together nicely at the end. But some of the things I didn't like about it, um, right off the bat, the tone is much more um, melodramatic and kind of campy and it doesn't match what I liked about the first season, which felt a little more um, grounded. Uh, one of the first things in this season is a character we're introduced to called the Wizard. Well, he calls himself the Wizard, and he has a fear-based um, super speed. And at first, you're supposed to think he's crazy, and that's kind of like an absurd thing. But then you find out that it's true, and the special effect of him running fast is so bad and done so poorly. Um, I know this came out before, but having recently seen the boys and how cool they handle super speed compared to the wizard and how lame it is here, it's, it's just, um, it's not favorable when you compare the two. So season one had a really good, strong focus on the villain of Kilgrave. Everything was building around that. Season two doesn't have any real villain. Um, there's some things that come up, and then they're kind of uh, they don't they end up not being the main villain. And there really is no main villain, which is kind of a curious thing. Uh, we've I've noticed it with quite a few of these Netflix shows that they either don't have a main villain or they switch the main villain like halfway through the show. And this one, it does kind of build up to a, a main villain of this killer, but then it's pretty, um, like halfway through the season, you find out it's Jessica Jones' mother. And after that point, it's she's not really that much of a villain and then later becomes not a villain at all. So it's it's a very uh, it's kind of interesting. I like that these shows kind of play with the narrative structure as much as I think that it's good to have something like like Kingpin was in season one of Daredevil, where it's 
a primary focus that you're building towards, it does make these shows a little more, um, well, less formulaic and a little more inventive on what they can do. So I, I've come to appreciate that more as I, as I watch these shows. As I said, Jessica Jones' mother is revealed to still be alive. And we find out that the way Jessica got her powers was through a doctor that had experimented on her. And he apparently did the same thing on her mother, but her mother had been injured worse and had more side effects. And this is a pretty heavy focus of the season. And I gotta say, I wasn't that interested in it. I don't really care about these superheroes' backstories that much at this point. Um, when Luke Cage was explaining how he got his powers in season one, I didn't care that much. Um, I don't really care about it here. I'm, I've seen so many backstories with these and origin stories that it doesn't really matter to me all that much. Um, I'm fine just accepting that this is a person that has powers. They've had them. I don't really care how they got them. Uh, so that part wasn't super interesting and I've already seen enough. It's it, even the particulars here are not that interesting. It's a scientist that experimented on them. Okay, well, that's been done a million times. And as far as powers, Jessica Jones has the most basic boring powers that you see pretty much all superheroes have. It's really standard. She has above average strength and apparently above average healing. And that's about it. And when her mom's brought into it, her mom is considerably stronger than her. So it even makes her look a little less important. We've already seen compared to Luke Cage how much stronger he is. And one of the things that hurts a little bit, I wish these shows didn't pretend they were connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because anytime you're reminded of that, you just compare them to some of the people in the Avengers. And these heroes pale in comparison to any of those. I mean, we're talking like Jessica Jones' strength, and then you look at someone like the Hulk, and it's like, why even? It, it's not a big deal what she can do. So, and as the shows go on, it's obvious that like they they wish they were really connected to those shows, and. There's a lot more instances of that first, uh, of all the first seasons of these where they refer more to like the incident in New York and they'll say like the green guy. They don't like saying the, the names of the actual heroes for some reason. On this season, um, the, the main thing I noticed was just that um, there's a boy in it who had a Captain America uh, toy that he liked a lot. Um, but the reminders kind of, uh, they don't help. And it's kind of sad because obviously the movies didn't acknowledge these shows at all. So it was a very one-sided thing. Um, some more thoughts on this season. Trish had always been a character that I really enjoyed. Up until this season, um, she became very annoying. Uh, one of the things I was really interested in after season one of Jessica Jones was what happened to Simpson. Um, I thought that was going to play maybe a major role and he does come back but he gets like just a couple minutes of screen time before he is killed and basically the only reason he was brought back is so that Trish can take his combat enhancing drugs and his weapons and go down a dark path. And one thing uh, about watching these in chronological order, season one was so long ago because since season one of Jessica Jones, I've watched like Daredevil season two, Luke Cage season one, Iron Fist season one, The Defenders, Punisher season one. So it feels like a long time ago that I watched that's one of the kind of um, side effects of going in this chronological order. And I'm not able to watch these shows kind of rapid fire binge watch. I work them in when I can, but generally it takes me a week or two to get through a season. So that feels forever ago. So I just thought I'd mention that. But Trish, um, 
I didn't like her story arc in this and how she there was an episode where it shows kind of back in time what she used to be like when she was more vapid and into fame and just wanting to kind of go along with the life that her mother had set up for her and she's kind of falling back into some of that here where she really wants to um, be famous but more than anything uh, apparently she really wants superpowers and uh, her as a character I didn't care for but also the actress playing her I didn't think really had the best acting chops when she was supposed to be like getting more violent and depicting kind of what the drug use was doing to her and things like that it wasn't very believable she wasn't that good at it she's better at playing kind of um the happy the happy well-adjusted person she didn't she couldn't really pull this off um malcolm from uh the first season and i think and he was also in defenders i believe um I, I liked his story arc. I thought that's been, he was one of the highlights of the first season and it continued here. I like seeing where he, where he goes as he tries to help Jessica become a better like private investigator and actually do good things until it leads to him splitting off on his own. I thought that was good. Um, Hogarth has an interesting thing. She's a character that's appeared and most of the shows at this point, so it's kind of interesting to to see where she's gone. But I liked I liked where things went with her as she found out she had this um, disease that was going to end up killing her and how it affected her. That's been pretty good. Um, the the thing that I just didn't like that much was the whole mother storyline which unfortunately was the primary focus of the season all these other ones are side character things so that's kind of what threw me off a bit um i didn't like the mother character at all she's got this rage issue where she can't control herself and just starts killing people basically um and the woman playing her again I didn't think she was very good at portraying that, and it wasn't that believable. And I just didn't like the whole thing in general uh, with that. But like I said, things do start to come together towards the end of the season. One of the other interesting comparisons after watching Punisher right before this is on Punisher, he's killing people all the time. It doesn't bother him. Um, Jessica Jones, is really struggling with the fact that she's killed Kilgrave at the end of season one, and that weighs very heavily on her. Um, so that's just kind of another interesting direct comparison between the two and how she handles it. And that is something that's um, way deep on her and caused her to slide even further into depression. Um, one of the things towards the end of the season that I really liked is there's an episode I think it's probably episode 10 or 11 where she does commit another, she does kill someone else. Um, it's debatable whether it was an accident or not. But after that, she starts seeing Kilgrave all the time. And he's talking to her, following her along with her. And she's not actually seeing him. It's her mind manifesting him and he represents kind of her darker side. And I thought when that happened, the show really picked up. Um, he brings such an energy to the show that was lacking when, when you watch up till then. I wish that they had had him appear throughout the season. It didn't have to be as much as it was in this episode, but if he would pop up every once in a while talking to her um, while the death weighed on her from the start of the season and maybe it manifested more and more over time, I think that would have been really cool. It would have been a way to um, add that energy to the show that it was really lacking for the majority of the season. When I first started watching the season, I don't know why, but my Netflix messed up and it started me on episode two and I thought it was kind of weird 
when I got about like eight minutes into the episode before I realized what was going on. But I thought it was kind of funny because I was able to figure out everything going on with no problem. It was just kind of interesting because I thought it was throwing us directly into a story that had kind of already started. And I was thinking, oh, I wonder if it's going to double back on itself and kind of explain why she's looking into this doctor. Um, there was another thing where Trish was already involved in a relationship. Uh, there was a couple things that I thought I thought it was kind of cool, really. And then when I realized what was going on, I went back and watched the first episode and it explained some of it. But it kind of was kind of interesting to me the fact that you didn't really need to watch the first episode to figure out what was going on with the second episode. And then something else that kind of struck me was it never explained when Trish just started the relationship with this guy because when you watch the first episode, it's already just going on. I don't remember it being anything in like the Defenders or season one, so I don't know why they just went forward with that. But um, yeah, just kind of an interesting observation that wouldn't have happened if my Netflix didn't mess up on me. Jessica's attitude towards the doctor that created or saved her life, basically. What happened was he did, uh, I guess, illegal genetic experiments that saved her and saved her mom. And her biggest complaint seemed to be that he did it without consent when they're basically dying. They're not going to be able to give consent. And honestly, it just came off as rather, I don't know if whiny is the right word, but... It, it wasn't flattering. It was like, all she was just angry with this guy, wanted to turn him into the police and kept blaming him for everything. And he essentially seemed to be a good guy. He seemed to be one of the better people on the show. And eventually it pressured him into killing himself and destroying all his work, which I, I didn't like that kind of story at all either. Um, I don't know, everything surrounding the main central plot of this one, I didn't really like. And then the f ending of the show is that Trish kills her mother and you could kind of, you could see this coming. It was hinted at throughout and the one of the very last things of the show that's setting up for the next season is that whatever the doctor had been experimenting on with Trish seems to have at least somewhat worked and given her powers. Um, she seems to have abnormally good reflexes at the very end. So I am uh, interested to see where that goes. I imagine that'll play a large part in the next season as Trish and Jessica seem to be enemies now and Trish seems to be powered. So that that's one thing that, that saved things in the end and made me a little more interested. I, I, I am looking forward to season three and seeing where that goes. One thing that I thought was a little weird is one of the characters, one of the neighbor characters in season one, um, the girl whose brother ended up um, killing himself because of Kilgrave, her twin brother, just didn't appear on this at all. I don't remember saying like she left or, or what happened before, but that was kind of odd that it was just totally excluded. One thing that really stood out to me, and I didn't really feel this way with season one or notice it, but all the film noir elements feel very forced in season two. They feel like they're just kind of tacked on, not really earned, not really used in appropriate ways. They feel like they're just kind of added as an afterthought and what do i mean by this um the music the intro music all this kind of jazzy very like very uh classic detective type music doesn't seem to fit the tone of the show at all jessica's um inner dialogues that we hear in voiceover throughout the show feel very uncharacteristic it doesn't really match the way she speaks normally it doesn't seem like something that she would do. I wouldn't picture having these internal thoughts. I wouldn't picture her sharing these thoughts and narrating it for anybody. 
Um, they felt very tacked on. Every time I heard them, really, it took me out of it a little bit, or, or it was almost like an eye-rolling thing. Um, other elements, like her, her constant drinking, um, the whole private investigator thing, she's basically not much, not even really a private investigator for most of the season. Um, she's not doing any private investigating. I don't know. As someone who's worked on a, a comic book that is basically a superhero film noir homage, uh, I, I guess I was a little more sensitive to it watching it here. Um, but it just, I don't know if the first season, I think the first season did a better job making it feel like it was a noir that happened to have a superhero. This season went more melodramatic and it, it didn't really feel like a noir. So the noir stuff felt like it didn't make sense. So let's put a grade on it, I guess. Um, so while I didn't like probably the first nine episodes that much, they had things that kind of bothered me or didn't really gel. I would say the last three or four were good. Um, so it's kind of hard to to say it's better to have something that ends well than something that's really good that has a crappy ending, I'd say. Um, because that ending is what leaves a bigger impression on you. So I'll give it, uh, let's do a five out of 10. It was good enough. It wasn't anything that I really like hated. Um, I enjoyed this more than the Punisher season I just watched. Um, I didn't enjoy it as much as the first season. Um, we'll see what comes next uh, when, whenever I get to season three. So the next show I'll be watching is Luke Cage season two. So if you want to follow along, watch that one. And um, as soon as I'm done with it, I'll put up a review of that. So until next time.